It's no secret that much of popular Greek mythology centers around Zeus and his fellow Olympians, which is why in today's video we'll be discussing five of the lesser known gods and goddesses. The first deity that we'll be discussing today is Ares, the goddess of discord and strife. Now the way the ancient Greeks would pronounce her name was Ares, which is actually not too dissimilar from the way we would pronounce the god of war Ares. I'm sure there are some of you who may be more familiar with her Roman equivalent, Discordia, and for those who are unaware of what strife and discord means, it refers to anger, bitterness, hostility and disagreement, so you can probably already start to imagine what type of goddess Eris was. Homer's interpretation of Eris was as the daughter of Zeus and Hera. Homer then describes her as the sister and companion of Ares. At first she was only a tiny thing, but as she followed her brother witnessing war and all the things that came with it, she grew so big that when she walked the earth, her head could touch the heavens. She would then rain down bitterness and pain upon mankind. Hesiod, on the other hand, describes her as the daughter of night, meaning the goddess Nyx. In Hesiod's interpretation, she is described as bringing forth all the struggles of mankind, personified as her children. She gave birth to hardship, starvation, pain, battle, war, and Hesiod's list of all manner of horrid things continues endlessly. The most well-known tale feature in Eris is how she instigated the Trojan War out of spite, but that is something we'll be discussing in more detail when we do eventually cover the Trojan War. Our second goddess is one that does bear some resemblance to Eris. It is the goddess of war, conquest and bloodlust, Enyo, or Enyo. Homer regarded Enyo and Eris as the same goddess, but there are several tales that make a clear distinction between the two deities. Enyo is often seen following Ares into battle, but her relationship with the god of war varies, from sister to wife to even mother in some stories. There are some accounts of Ares going by the title of Enyalios, but this was also the name of the son that he had with Enyo a son that would later go on to adopt his father's role as god of war. The exact role that Enyo played in war was that of destruction. She would orchestrate the fall of cities, following Ares and his sons into battle. She is often depicted as a heavily armoured woman with a sword and shield, similar to her Roman counterpart, Bologna. Enyo was a fierce and bloodthirsty goddess, and almost definitely not one that you'd wish to encounter. With all of the bloodshed aside from our first two deities, our third is Asclepius, or Asclepios, the god of medication, rejuvenation and well-being. Asclepius was seen as the god of physicians, a skill that he would learn at a very young age. When he was born, his father Apollo took him to the centaur Chiron, who would teach him the art of medicine, a skill that he would then transfer to his daughters, who were seen as the personification of medicine and healing. He was often depicted holding a rod or a staff that was encircled by a serpent. The Asclepian snake was named after the god, and it's a species of non-venomous snake that became associated with medicine and healing. Unfortunately for Asclepius, he would later be killed by Zeus when he accepted payment to bring back the son of Theseus from the dead. There are tales where Zeus later resurrected Asclepius in order to avoid any conflict of Apollo. Asclepius was allowed to continue his trade as long as he promised to never resurrect the dead without permission. As we were just on the topic of death, as gloomy as it may sound, that does take us to our fourth deity, which is actually a trio of demigods that assume the role of judgement within the underworld. Radamanthes, Minos, and Aeacos were all once the mortal sons of Zeus, credited with establishing law and order on Earth. Upon their deaths they were granted the role of judges by Hades, and they would essentially maintain law and order in his domain. As a trio they would judge the souls that entered the underworld, deciding if they would be punished or sent to the Elysium fields. Each judge would be assigned an individual role. Aeacos was the guardian of keys, and would primarily judge the men of Europe. Radamanthes would rule over the Elysium fields, and was charged with judging the men of Asia. Minos, the once great king of Crete, was considered to be the third and final vote. If the first two judges could not come to a decision, then Minos' vote was final. So our fifth and last deity of today is Phorcys, the son of Pontus and Gaia, and one of the oldest gods of the sea. Now Phorcys is a god that you may have heard me mention, but never in too much detail, and that's because the only time he's ever mentioned in stories is as the father of a creature or a deity. Depictions of Phorcys normally resemble an older man, with the lower half of a crab, and sometimes a tail of a fish. Phorcys and his wife Ceto may not feature in many stories themselves, but many of the most iconic creatures and figures in Greek mythology are often attributed as their children, ranging from Medusa and the Gorgons to Scylla and Echidna. This naturally led to Phorcys being seen as the god of large sea creatures, so next time you encounter a story with an enormous monster of the sea, then there's a good chance that Phorcys may have been the father. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at some of the lesser known deities. There will be another video including 5 more next week as I promised the patrons a list of 10 which has now been split into 2 videos of 5. So if there are any deities you'd like to see in that video, then let me know in the comments below. 